Steam is a double-edged sword. On one hand, it's a place of hopes and dreams where any developers like myself can express our creativity and find a community of gamers that appreciate our out-of-this-world imagination. On the other hand, it can feel like the underbelly of a utopia that punishes you for being too innovative, which is ironic, since that's the very thing that gamers like about indie games over AAA titles. Games succeed by hitting this imaginary, blurry, 7,000 wishlist line that takes us to the promised land of fulfillment. Then I discovered this video, or really this guy, who points out why I was doomed from the start. I'm grateful that my game Starhead is currently at 118, but I still have a long way to go to hit that blurry milestone. Um, I'm still hopeful, and here's why. Here's why. I, I, just, just hear me out. One day I was at my brother's house doing our own creative projects and playtesting my game. Later we had a grill where a bunch of friends came over and were curious onto what I was working on. Many people struggled with the beta, but still enjoyed the time, but there was one guy, there was one guy in particular, this motherfucker. No, it was this not a motherfucker, he's, he's really cool. Um, he picked up the mechanics very easily, he also played the game the longest. And the funny thing about it is that he actually hates platformers, but he liked mine. Because to him, it was unlike any other game of this genre that he's ever played, which is like the best compliment I've ever been told on Starhead. So my problem is how the fuck do I get this game in front of people like him? I have a chance, I have a chance to make something new here and show it to the world. But because of these three marketing issues that I have, it may all still go to shit. The truth of the matter is because there are so many 2D platformers, and it's not to say that they're not in demand, but compared to the other genres on mentioned in this video or in this list, to make a 2D platformer as an indie developer is like picking that the worst ratio of horse in that GTA casino minigame. On the bright side, my game Starhead is actually a combination of a bunch of these genres. On the surface, it looks like Donkey Kong and Angry Birds, but it feels like a fusion of Sekiro's mobility with Cuphead's intensity. And normally that would sound like an amazing, unique idea, right? Well, not according to this guy, which leads to, it doesn't matter how mind-bending we indie developers try to make our games, if no one knows what it is or understands what it is the moment they hit the Steam page, they're not really interested. At least for the most part. I mean, I mean if you're like me, you just like to be adventurous and buy like random or go into like random things for no reason, maybe. That's not the case for the majority. Especially on Steam, where gamers tend to be very rigid in their preference of genres. And it's not an attack on gamers specifically. People just generally like familiarity. It makes sense, and this, is, this phenomenon exists in all industries, whether it's music, film, etc. So platformers are known to have precise gameplay and simple mechanics so that anyone can pick it up. My game breaks a lot of those rules by, by allowing players to, to solve their problems by any means necessary. A Starhead will reward you for trying to break it, with the addition that you're skilled enough to control your own chaos. What it does have in common with other platformers aside from how it looks, is that the mechanics in this game do slowly introduce to you ideas and try to get you comfortable with them before being challenged by a boss at the end. Educational games are typically targeted at children and are meant to feel like fun study tools. Yeah, I don't do any of that. Starhead favors more hidden secrets and hints in a more knowledge-based type of game like Sekiro, where you could just charge head-on into levels and bosses and be fine, but it's a completely different dynamic if you were to pay more attention to what's going on around you. It's just not a heavy requirement, but it's part of what makes it a parody of the education-like type of game although it's not a true educational game, at least in an academic sense. So I should probably avoid using words like education because then I'll give the wrong impression of what this game really is. In contrast, the general Steam audience prefer dark and greedy content, like horror games, etc. But the main character of my game is named QT, which is cleverly short for quadratic data. Do you see the problem here? In my defense, Twitter seems to like cute cozy things and that's kind of I'm not gonna lie to you I did kind of take that into consideration with naming the main character of Starhead. It's ironic because the theme of Starhead 
is about mutated objects, machines, and creatures based on a mysterious energy called sin. The dark, gritty elements are kind of there, though it's not, you know, it's not a horror game, of course. Why does all this matter? Well, it's capsules and videos and trailers can only do so much. It's very different from actually trying the game. Even though this playtester really enjoyed his experience, he wouldn't have played the game if not for the social gathering that was going on in that time. And seeing someone else having played the demo and him being curious and to try it out for himself. So I still need to figure out how to make this connection. And so there is still one more thing that I can focus on is myself. See, without marketing, you can kiss your hopes and dreams of being an independent creator goodbye. Like that shit's not gonna happen. I started this channel three years ago, right around the time I took indie game development seriously. And as you can probably tell, I haven't been super consistent with my uploads. It's both an issue of productivity and me comparing myself to other creators. I look at all these other content creators and I'm watching their level 100 edited videos and then me trying to take note and mimic that at my level five level editing skills. I know I've heard, I've heard the old age, don't compare yourself to others, but I still just couldn't help myself, honestly. Oh, we're gonna move this over here. And then considering all these other themes that I'm tackling, it's very easy for me to get overwhelmed. So I've decided to take it slow and just go at one video at a time and just slowly improve each video without being a perfectionist. And one of the ways I do that is by limiting what I do only on the weekends and move on if I don't finish. If you give yourself forever to do something, you will take forever to do something. But if you limit the time, you actually will get it done much quicker. And that helps with compromising that perfectionist mentality. So I'm trying my best to embrace the journey without too much expectations. And I think I've found a way to appreciate this for what it is instead of dreading making videos because although marketing matters for independent creators like myself, I don't believe that it necessarily has to feel like work and I wanna make this as fun as I possibly can. Now, I know I can just go with publishers, but call me crazy. I actually like the insane idea of building your whole studio from scratch. Will stubbornness and lust for complete freedom be my downfall? Who knows? But I'm gonna try it anyways. So what's next? Um. I could venture out to find my audience, get creative with marketing and talk about other topics and start an, or start another channel or whatever and work like crazy and put myself out there to hit the 7,000 wishes before Steam Fest, but risk overworking myself and going insane, especially when there's no guarantee that this game will actually succeed, but I'm still going to make it anyways. I could defend Starhead on Steam and change the tags because it technically is a simulator, it just doesn't play like the Power Wash simulator or anything like that. It's not like a relaxing, cozy experience per se. It's not necessarily as focused on platforming as what you normally expect from a 2D platformer. And I could potentially risk making players feel like they've been lied to because I'm not following all the traditional rules of what the genre asks for. So I have to find that balance between being innovative and referencing towards familiarity, at least I think. And then the last note, I could abandon this game, make something completely different, and just take the L, and appreciate this experience for what it is. But then risk regretting not having given it my all, and potentially making someone else's favorite game, at least within a season. And I'm not trying to be pessimistic about making platformers, if you really like making, if you're an indie developer like myself, and you like making platformers, and makes you happy, then by all means, yeah, go for it. You never know. Um, and if you're a hobbyist, I mean, do whatever you want. Don't let someone else tell you what what you can and can't do. Because even if I lose in the end, I think I'd rather give it my all. So that way I can kind of learn from whatever mistakes I make and become a better designer for my future games. So considering that this game hasn't been published yet, there's no telling what could possibly happen. And if you're curious enough to find out what happens next um, or what happens down the road in my personal journey feel free to subscribe like this video so other people can watch it it might be insightful for other indie devs you never know and and if my game idea interests you feel free to wishlist on steam it is available i am shooting for a 2025 release don't exactly know what months yet I haven't done the research um adios They're halfway home. Holding second.
and it's the six horse. The four horse looking good while leading the field. Coming to the wire! A saucy win by something saucy.